everybody. Welcome to a Monday night edition of Bread Talk here at Fish on Fire. Uh, I think this is like our 19th episode that we've been we've been doing, and it's been a blast. I have tonight. I like to call her the queen. Here we go. The queen of <coughs> season ticket sales for the Orlando Predators. It's true. Miss Mary Beth. Scott. Welcome, Mary Beth. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much for having me, and thank absolutely. you for the booze. I love you. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no. Hey, look, I wanted to have Mary Beth on because every week, I mean, every week I go like, call Mary Beth Scott at da 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 give you me the number. You know what my number is by now. I don't. I don't. I, I, I know two numbers. It's 386-624-3731. You hear? <laughs> and, and you know what? IT John is going to put it on there in a, in a minute or so, anyhow. But I, I wanted to bring you on so people could see the face behind the name and the voice when they're talking to you on the phone. Because, I mean, you, as far as season ticket sales go and as far as enthusiasm goes for the Orlando Predators, my God, you are so excited every time we talk about the Predators. During the season, off the season last year when I first met you, I went like, I love this girl. She's amazing. And I don't I, shut up often. I, she doesn't shut up at all. Hey, Coach. I got Coach hey, Ben coach. Bennett is in the audience tonight, too. Um, oh, I also see Mr. Ron Tredico, uh, hey, the selling partner. And we're going to talk about him later on. Talk about him. He doesn't like to get on, on camera, but we're going to talk about him later on. But, um, Mary Beth, I got I to gotta, I gotta ask you a couple of things. And I always ask people this stuff. It's like, where are you from? Where are you from, Mary Beth? I was born in kind of upstate New York, about like Westchester right. County. I was born there. Spent my formative years there, then spent quite a bunch of time in California. And I've been here almost 20 years now. What is formative years? What is that? Too bad high school. Okay. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. The damaging uh, years. <laughs> the damaging years. Yes. Um, how, did, how, how did you get involved with the Orlando Predators? This is a great story. When I first moved here in 2002, I worked as a bartender for uh, Sam Seltzer's in Altamont Springs. Okay. And they had a contest. Whoever did the most upselling got prizes. So I upsold a bunch of liquor, and they said, what do you want? And one of the prizes was a pair of tickets to the Predators. And I was like, yeah, what the heck, I'll go, I'll check it out. And within two weeks, I had quit the job, I was working for the Predators, <laughs> so the season tickets, and pretty much that was that. I gotta tell you two things. Okay. Pull the mic a little bit closer so they okay. can hear you out here. Sorry. And the second thing is you look amazing tonight. Thank you very you, much. You, you, you didn't have to get all dressed up for me, you know? I thought it'd be nice to at least brush my hair, you know, brush my teeth. When you look amazing, you, you did a great job. What's that they say? You clean up pretty good, Mary Beth. On occasion, on occasion. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. You do the same. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I wore a white shirt because my other Predator shirts I didn't get to do. I was, we, were, we, were, we were putting together a pergola this weekend, so I didn't get to do my Predator It's shirts. so nice. Oh, thank you. It's so beautiful. I know, right? It is. I'll tell you what, I'm glad we paid somebody to do it, though. All I did was put the lights up. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I just put I the pictures up on Facebook. I can't, I can't. ever known Pat. I can't, well. Known. I can't take the credit for it. I mean, this stuff was, I, I, like I told the guy, well, I didn't tell the guy, I told I told my wife, I said, listen. <laughs> you told your wife, Mary, to I, tell the guy. I know, I said, baby, we've been married for 20 years, and I'd like to stay married a little bit longer, so let's go ahead and just pay Make somebody this to put this stuff together. <laughs> you know, because it took them from one o'clock one day to eight o'clock that night, and then the next day, from nine to noon, there's no way. There's no way that she could. She could no, 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 no. He, no. There's no way she could have put up with me that long. No, it's just it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. Well, so, she married you for 20 years. I'm sure she'll hang in for another 20 more if that's what it takes. Well, the last name's Lil Bianco. Um, <laughs> now, how did you get? Working for the Predators. I 
literally after I had gone to the game, I won the tickets, I took my son to the game, we had a fantastic time, and I am not joking, two weeks later there was an ad, there was an actual ad in the Orlando Sentinel, that's how old I am, that's how far we're going back, there was an ad in the paper Orlando Sentinel about salespeople, so I went in, I um, pitched the boss at the time, he said no, I was heartbroken, he goes go figure it out, call me back at 5 o'clock, and I did, and the last question he said was, can you come in Monday at 9? And that's as easy the as rest it is history. <laughs> Yeah, the rest is kind of history. I mean, for better or worse, yes. It's hey, hey, that's all good. That's all good. No, uh, I love it. I love the Preds so much. I'm always happy to have an opportunity to be working for them, with them, anything. I know you do. I mean, a, a, lot of, a lot of the people out there, you know what? Whoever you sold season tickets to last season and this season know how much you love the Predators because you can just hear it in your voice. Even over the phone, they can see you smiling and how excited you are. I, 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 you know, I know. I've actually had some people, you know, say, no, I really don't want tickets, but you're awful good on the phone, so if you're ever looking for a job, let me know. <laughs> I said, well, this is really the only thing I want to sell. People like this. People want this. They love it, you know, so it's the only job I want to do. In the off-season, though, are you not working for a Halloween store? I am. I work at Spirit. Give a plug. Give, All a, right. give a shout out. Woohoo! Spirit Halloween in Deland. That's where my husband Chris and I live, and I'm working out there. It's part time. It's so much fun, and the discount is ridiculous. So if you're looking for something <laughs> to do, go check out SpiritHalloween.com. Spirit Halloween. See you later, Mary Beth Scott. There's your phone number right there. That's the one. You know what? I, I, I do it all the time. I'm going to let you do it. Tell us about season tickets. What what they're running for. How many games we're going to have. And I'll, uh, believe me, I'll cut you off if, if you go different di different direction. But tell us, <laughs> tell us before. Like it's happened before. So tell us a little bit about season tickets and what they can do. Well, the great thing about season tickets right now, yeah, it stinks. We all wanted to have a season this year, and it broke all of our hearts. I think we kind of knew that it would happen, but this was the safest way to go. And what most people have done, with very few exceptions, is just roll over their season tickets for next year. Now, as far as the amount of home games we will be having, people had already paid and had got a six-game package. I know we will have more games. I don't know how many yet. That is up to Pat when he tells me I'm allowed to say anything, um, especially Facebook. <laughs> and um, I, I, as far as uh, season tickets go, every seat in the lower bowl is $98. Seven home games. Seven home games. Seven home games. So seven home should... games. Exactly. $98 for seven home games. Unless you want to sit, you know, the first few rows are very premium leather cushy seats. It comes with extra perks. Those are a little bit more expensive, but they're great, and the people who have them love them. Other than that, $98 all day long, and I've got some really great seats available. Now, that's from, what is it, row eight and above in lower bowl? Well, actually, in the end zone, it starts in the front row. Boom. And so so one, if you, you want to be in the end zone, and there's no nets, row, there's no nets bucks. right? Well, there's a protective net for the uh, ribbon screen, but not a net like that's, there used yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, just yeah. the Amway. The Amway wants right, that up right. there. Well, that thing costs a lot of money. We don't want to yeah, buy that. Well, does either. it? So that's awesome. <laughs> so, so for $98, you can get seven home games. In the front row, in the end zone. In the front row, in the end zone. In the corners, it is up to the, I believe it is the sixth row. And on the sidelines, eighth row. That's awesome. I've so got for, some great for, seats available. If you want to sit, say, like at the at midfield, at the 25-yard line, row eight, you can get tickets for 98 bucks. I mean, they may not be in the aisle, but yes, I can absolutely I do that. Aisle, they you're at midfield, well, they're, I mean, right there. The, the one thing that you tell me about, you know, that you I'm see what Mary Beth does. She likes to argue with me. <laughs> it's you always know. fun, you know, and I'm usually right, so I'm just gonna go. I mean, I get like you say that I'm enthusiastic about the job, and I bring up aisle seats because I have people that have like a bad left knee or a bad right knee, so I'll make sure that I get them in a seat that you know accommodates exactly what they need. And whatever. I throw Mary Beth's name out there and I say, go Mary Beth, you know why I do that? I mean, we have 
other people with season tickets or selling season tickets, but Mary Beth is so knowledgeable and she has her laptop at the house and can take care of you right there and then when you call. So call Mary Beth at 386-624-3731. Keep in mind that Ticketmaster's been a little bit wonky lately, but I can get you an exact seat assignment. See there, Mary Beth is amazing. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I think so too. I know Mary. Beth. I know Mary. Beth. And do you have my um, my my ensemble, my outfit for Halloween yet? I absolutely do. It's um, it's like a suit, you know, and it's a black suit, and it's got orange jack o' lanterns on the jacket and the pants. I've already picked it out and hid your size. You see there, Halloween. Oh, night. I shouldn't have said that. No spirit Halloween. I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm playing. Go. I'm playing. I'll go and pick it up. Uh, we do have a question here. We do have a question here. It says, I know you and your wife, Mary, have been attending Predator Games for years and trying to get others to attend as well. Um, can, what's that? Can we and how do we play NAL Fantasy Football? How much are game tickets? Well, game tickets, we just covered it, Mike Will Bianco. We just covered that. But as far as the fantasy... Try to keep up, Mike Bianco. Mike Lobianco. Yeah. I think I never said that last name before. That's my brother. He just... He's, he I was, figured. He, he was here last... He was here and he drove all the way up from Port St. Lucie last week to, uh, to, to watch the show. Oh, nice. But um, as far as the fantasy football thing goes on, the closer we get to the season, um, I'm going to be getting with... The Commissioner of the League, Chris Agreed, and in two weeks, actually, in two weeks, it's been confirmed, and I'll bring it up later on, but we're going to have Rob Storm, who is the Executive Director of the National Arena League and the owner of the Carolina Cobras and the Jacksonville Sharks. I don't know what percentage with the Sharks he is, but I know he is affiliated. Um, I know you're watching, Rob, so you can... You can uh, chime in anytime you like. Hi, Rob. Hope you're feeling better from last week. He is. It was, I think it was a tequila flu. Oh, it wasn't well, that yeah. corona thing. It was a tequila flu. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I know, Rob. I hope you feel better. <laughs> um, roll the intro. Look at uh, Nick Green. Nick Green is one of our Fred heads. He's not here. He is actually in... Oh my God, he's working. He's out of town. He's not here. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Hi, but, Nick. We miss you. But we have. Hey, we got Milton. Milton yeah. State here. Milton Magic's State here. is one of my clients. Absolutely. Magic's yes. one of my one of my Absolutely. season ticket yes. holders. Uh, before I forget, what do you Actually, think? Actually, I am a proud owner of all the Pred heads. Oh, look Whether at Whether it's Don Traver, no, I don't own them. Let me take that back. They are my season ticket holders. <laughs> I so it's himself, Tom Traver, Magic over, who's right over there. They're, they're my guys. If I'm not mistaken, I believe you have uh, Crazy John Cheney as well. Most definitely. Yeah, he is in the house tonight, too, with Psycho Fever TV. This will be Shout the first time I've met TV. him in person. Oh, you're in for a treat. Well, you know, quarantine's been kind of a you-know-what, you know? It's... Don't get out much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Trust know? me. Though. I haven't shaved in weeks. It looks the same as that as the last time I saw you. <laughs> no. I haven't shaved in weeks. Oh, heck, what? I haven't shaved in If it wasn't a, a you know, pandemic, I would be like, let me feel it. But yeah. no, I'll do it. I was thinking about, I was thinking about letting it grow out, and then my wife pointed out how it, it's receding and there's a little bald spot in the back. She goes, no, you need to, you need to shave it. It's not going to so. be the same as when you got married, your marriage picture, when I was like, who the heck is that you oh, no, married? Nobody, to? nobody, nobody, no. It's like, no. I didn't look anything like you, but. but that's okay. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. Jake, you look it up, you know, keep it fresh. Yeah, that's how we do it. Um, how long? How many seasons have you been with the Predators? I knew you were going to ask me this, and I've been trying to think, and because I, I can't really remember. So I, it looks like eight. It's looking like eleven on and off. Eleven years. Woo! Woo there are different. 
different owners, different times, different people, and different, you know, I worked for um, another arena team that tried to make it in Daytona for a couple of years. They right. weren't able to. But, you know. That's not the predators. Still, absolutely not, but still, it's indoor football, and if we can get a good market going anywhere, let's. Well, I see a couple people Hi, here saying. Hi, Hi, Brittany. Brittany says, hey, man, Beth. Tom Trevor says, that's right, you are her season ticket. Me, season I wanted ticket to talk girl. about Tom Trevor because he was my actual first ever season ticket holder that I ever had ever at the Orlando Predators. I got to tell you this, and, and Tom, I, I know you're watching, and please, I mean no, no disrespect. Tom is a fan addict. Tom has a truck. It is a Predator truck. I mean, the back of it says Predator. I mean, it's just unbelievable. The first time I met Tom, he goes, you got to see my truck. You don't think I'm a fan? Come see my truck. I'm going, bro, I thought he was going to take me over and hit me with a bat or something. But he showed me this, he showed me this amazing, he showed me this amazing straw that comes it's out of the truck. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like, wow. I said, that's awesome. I mean, he's definitely, he's definitely earned the honor of, of a bread head and, a, you know, a number one fan without a doubt. I mean, I'm not going to tell you his whole, like, life story, but part of his email is indoor war, you know, and that's going back, in, I think it's at, like, AOL or something, you know what I mean? So, it's been around for a while. Like I said, he was my first one. Now, I, I have another question here for you, Mary Beth, and believe me, it's not from Ron or Nate or Kenny or anybody. It says, if any, who is your favorite owner and why? Oh, Lord. Mike Lobianco, you are in so much trouble when I ever meet you. <laughs> when I ever meet you. Honestly, and this is no BS, but um, I, I, I got I to go with Nate at this point. He's put so much heart and soul into this thing when everybody thought last year nothing was going to happen. And Nate just, and, and you know, hey, Ron, love you, Ron, wherever you are. But, you know, Nate put so much into this, you know, and he's had his trials and tribulations too, but he always is just 100% friends. Without a doubt. And right now we got to see what happens with this New York team. Who am I supposed to cheer for now? You're a predator. You better believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, here's what you do. You, you cheer for the Predators first, then you cheer for the uh, Albany, whatever they're going to be called. It's not been out there. It's that rolls so many tongue, rumors. Albany, whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, you want Orlando, Albany. And us to have the home field advantage here in Orlando. Oh, absolutely. That way we get free tickets. I mean, I'm just really, saying. I, I, I just want to, like, kind of, sorry, Rob. I just want to beat Jacksonville a couple of times real hard. Oh, I have You know, is that such a bad thing to say? But anyway, hi, Daniel Garcia. <laughs> Daniel Garcia. Oh, uh, so, Mike, hopefully that answers your question. Mary Lobianco has a question. She says, Mary Beth Scott, you always ask what their favorite meal is. What's your favorite meal? It's, I, it's interesting, Mary, because being at home all the time, I've been starting to cook a lot of different things. So he's the happy recipient of mistakes, whether they look good or not, or taste good or not. But I made some lobster rolls the other day that came out really good, and I made a caramelized onion with fig and gorgonzola kind of pastry. And we were, like, fighting over it with knives, you know? Like, for real. Like, you get it. He, you, he seems all nice and quiet, right? Oh, you see. Oh, yeah. Chris so, is something very quiet. like that, you know? I've known, I've known, I've known Mary Beth's husband for. Is a it? few years now. Don't know well, three. Two, no, not three. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This two. year's all bumpy. Almost two. Almost two years. I, I, he's so quiet. And I can really, I can really take this to where, but I'm gonna keep it PG. But he doesn't say much. He's very quiet, and and I can understand why by, by knowing Mary Beth, <laughs> he doesn't get a word edgewise. So, <laughs> but he's really nice. He's a. He, I love him. He brought you here. Um, right there. Is it? Hey, Cammy, how you doing, girl? Cammy says hi, Mary Beth. Cammy chimes in every Pred Talk. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. I love some of your Facebook posts. They're funny as hell. And can you just give me a second here about Red?
Reggie Parker. Yes, go ahead, Reggie she, Parker. Reggie is, um, I, I, she's Reggie, okay? And she is our guest services person that is always in the kiosk. So if you ever have a problem, if somebody's drunk next to you and being an idiot, I know, unheard of. But still, you know, any kind of problem, she's at guest services and she handles everything like a true champ. And she came back, well, she was going to come back last year, so I'm sure she'll be back for 2021. So that's who, that's who Reggie is. Yeah. I, I, she comes in, Reggie, you come in every time on, on Bread Talk, and I appreciate it so much. Thank you. I love you. Now I know, and I put two and two together, I know who you are. Okay. Girl, you have saved my book so many times in that arena, so uh, thank I, you. I tell you. I would love to have her in, in uh, 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 Will Call. <laughs> We're never putting Reggie uh, in Will Call. No, I wouldn't do that. I would not do that to you. Will Call is a, a beast nightmare. of its own. It is a beast of its own. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it to my worst enemy. And she still winds up there anyway because people go up to get services and like, hey, there's a problem with my ticket. So she has to go down and look for it. Yeah, she's still got to deal with it. Um, what does it say here? What does it say? Tom Trevor says Firebirds. I don't know, oh, Tom, if that's what you say. I think that's maybe the name of the Albany team? It could be. I don't think it's been announced yet. I know it's either going to be the Empire, the Albany, or Second Losers. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> you know. Who are the first because losers? Because we are, we are the Orlando Predators, and we are number one. So, I'm just saying. This is Pred Talk, not Albany Talk. That's right. right. One day, you know, who knows? Um, Nick Green, what did you say? Memphis is quiet tonight. So that's where Nick Green, Nick Green is in Memphis tonight. Um, no, Morgan. Oh, <laughs> no. Morgan. <laughs> Morgan's not into you, no beers. <laughs> What's up with Tampa? Tampa is still there. I mean, Tampa's there. Tampa Bay, um, oh, what is it? What is it? Uh, tornadoes. Tampa Bay Tornadoes. Yeah, so Reggie, yeah. Tampa Bay Tornadoes are there. You know, we're going to kick their ass it's too. It's going to be such a great, we're, we're there. Know, Warren I-4, Survive I-95. It's going to be great. What is that? Survive? The survive 95? I pulled out of like my that. hat no, like last that. year. Yeah, when we were going on a bus trip. Okay. So you said it? You, you, yeah, I was like, it well, I mean, I didn't if, trademark it if or you anything. Don't you don't know? <laughs> So I guess trademark anybody can use right it, now. you know. Survive. Trademark by Mary Beth. Survive by 95. <laughs> I love it. But the Warren I-4 would be so great because it's, I mean, it's closer. <laughs> oh, oh I Jacksonville. Know. Yeah, no, but it's I-4. That's, yeah, but we're in a bus. Who cares? The world is your If it's a party bus. bus, there's a lot of legalities you got to watch out for. I mean, you know. Sometimes the air doesn't work, the fast, you know, it's a whole thing. But it's always better to do the bus trip than go by yourself. Yeah. Eric Kohler. Bye. Bye. So, what we're going to do. Okay. Because I want you to give any shout outs right now that you have. And then I'm going to do roll into a clip that IT John has done for me. Have you got any shout outs you want to shout out to whoever? I mean, I could. I could like I could, people in my life? Predator people? people it doesn't matter. You know, favorite fans, everybody you want to say hi to. Listen, you're on, you're on Pred Talk. You're on Pred Talk tonight. Okay. Um, believe it or not, we have more than just five people or six people watching. You know, and we got, sometimes know. we got 10, 15. So, you well, know. Well, definitely, first and foremost is Chris. He does everything. He's so wonderful. You know, he's great. He. And who's Chris? And Chris is my husband, who is not that much of a sports fan. But he lucked into me, so yay him, I guess, you know. <laughs> I know, right? Chris went to I, I I met Chris before last you know, last season. Well, actually twenty nineteen, beginning of twenty eighteen. And um and he's not a sports person at all. But he's such a uh, kinda of sounds it sounds funny to me. He's such a trooper. <laughs> he, he takes Mary Beth. Because that's what he has to be to put up with me all the time. He takes Mary Beth to I can't say games. bad words at all. What's up in the Any event that I did in twenty nineteen and some of last year, uh, Chris took her there, stayed in the background he or is a you know, trooper. just he was just, I mean, you've you got a great support system. One time I didn't realize we were going to be outside on, uh, 
whatever that cobblestone road is downtown. And, Church uh, Street. Yes, yeah, that's the one. Thank you, my brain. And I, had, I thought we were going to be inside sitting down. And oh, and did you talk about uh, whiskey heels. business? Yes. We want to do whiskey business. Whiskey business. And I was wearing like four inch heels, and I said, oh no, this is. He walked back to the car, got my slippers out of the car, walked them back to me, made sure I was completely comfortable for the rest of the night, took Gina, the dancer, to her car to make sure that she was all right. And Gina Angel, hey. You know, I mean, he's a great guy. My son, Marcus, he may not be watching, but hey, I have a great grandson, a, a fantastic grandson, not a great grandson. I was going to say, what? <laughs> he's four years old. His name you is Marlo. Do he's dress supposed, well. Well, you know, a lot of money and time put into this and all that, you know. But uh, oh, Marcy, who did my hair, hey, girl, thanks. I like it so much. Morgan, for real. Morgan is the and bomb. Pat. Mary Lobianco, she's always, I mean, she's, if, if Chris is my trooper, then Mary's yours. Oh, without a doubt. You oh, know? without a doubt. Don't worry, he's there. Now, and happy um, belated birthday, Ray Lynn, right? Yours was recently, wasn't it? Okay, that's close enough to say, give you a happy birthday, Chef. Of course she's 26, would you say otherwise? <laughs> <laughs> Here, I see here. Uh, Michael Bianca says, My apologies, Ron. Thought for sure it would be you as a favorite owner. So apparently, Ron. Well, do you want me to be honest or do you just owner? want me to blow smoke up your whatever there, Michael Bianca? But he also said, Mary, were you a football fan as a youngster? And who was your favorite player or team? Was I? Oh, this is actually another funny story. Since I moved here from California, I lived in the San Francisco, I mean, the Santa Cruz area. So I was close to San Francisco and Oakland. And I was a fan of the Oakland Raiders, which should not surprise any of you if you've ever seen me in the, fan, in the stands at a game, you know. And I actually met John Gruden. He came in one day and he asked me who my favorite team was. And I had a Raiders. Necklace on, and he was like, Oh no, here we go. <laughs> you know? And I got to for my father in law, he's uh, he went to Auburn, he worked his way through Auburn, so Auburn for college. That's good, that's funny. Don't listen to Mike right there. He's like, what, what sports did you play in high school or college? Don't worry about him. I mean, <laughs> I don't now, think now, sports, I do know, I know, but I don't think so. I, know, I got a good friend of mine, Mr. Duckworth, Mr. Alan Claude Duckworth, wants to know who's your favorite mascot. Woo! Why do you even need to ask? You already know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I hadn't seen him in a while, and I walked up to him, and I think it was If you would have came last week, you would have saw him. I should have. Just say it. I couldn't, though. But I was so worried. I saw somebody in the claw a mask, you know, in, in the whole costume, and I heard there might be a thing. And I said, "Who's in there?" And he goes, "Who do you think it is?" And I was like, "All right, I go hello, you know, a little swap for hello." But I had to make sure it was in first before, you know, like it was. I didn't want to be groping some college kid, and this is how you know rumors get started and stuff. So I was like, start like that, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I should know because I start a lot of them. Um, <laughs> If they're true, they're not rumors, Pat. This is true. <laughs> hey, listen, I want to thank you so much. You don't thank have to walk you. off. You don't have to walk off just yet. But I want to thank you so much for driving all the way from the land. Yeah, we drove all the way here through tonight. Volusia, and Seminole, and then Orange County. So, but this place is great. So we're happy that we finally got to make it. And let me let me tell you though, she didn't only come just to be on prep time. She ordered some sort of a dough roller from Pampered Chef from my wife <laughs> months, ago. months and months ago. Which and I had to give to my grandson for his play doh. And now she had to come pick it up tonight. And I'm not supposed so. to say the word that he told me not to say, but I'm like, where's my mm, pastry roller, Pat? <laughs> what? I have it now. Yeah, you, now you got it. I gave it to you. I made sure you got it. You know, know. Right. listen, you. Thank you so much for having me on. This is, it's been a lot of fun. I'm glad you came on. I haven't me seen too. you in a while. So. I know, I haven't seen you in such a long time. It's so cool. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, look, now we got a bread shot. What's in this we thing? We have the Orlando Predator oh shots right here at Fish on Fire. So, I mean, it's very, it's, I like to call it Fish on Fire's cool day. Chris, so, whatever hey, happens listen. tonight, I apologize from the bottom of my heart. 
Chris, I hope you took your vitamins. All right, Beth. Cheers. What do you say? Let's go Preds. Go Preds. You go, girl. That was sweet. That's my cell. You can text me. You can hit me up at Mary Beth Scott at Orlando Predators Football dot com. Well, I'm sorry, M Scott at Orlando Predators Football dot com. And uh, I think that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. No, it's never that's it for you, Mary I mean, Beth. for me, right there. now. But listen, hey, thanks again. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Pat. Now, what it was I'm a lot do, of fun. We're gonna do something. We're gonna do something coming up here in just a second. We had. A lot of people ask, and somebody brought it up before about the voice of the Predators, Mr. Eric Kohler, interviewing me, and I said, really? People, you know, really? People want to know me? And I said, yeah, that's not going to happen. So I talked it over with, with Nate and Ron and everything, and they said, no, listen, you're the face of the Predators now, and I'm going, this race? What they, said <laughs> was, this race? what they said was, Pat and Mary Beth are the only ones left. we got to do something. So. <laughs> so, so, in just a minute, we're going to have Mr. Eric Kohler, the voice of the Predators, come up, and he's going to interview me. So, if you guys have any questions that you want to ask why, or ask Mr. Eric Kohler, hey, send him in, type him in. You can call too. I mean, you know, I'll throw out my number out there. So, um, but listen, two weeks ago, I had to go. I had to go up to uh, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you guys have had a great 2020 yet. My 2020 started out like shit. <laughs> Gen- More so than everybody else's. January 4th, my youngest brother passed away. On January 16th, uh, I drove up to Pennsylvania because my sister was very ill and she passed away. Um, thank you all very much. It's all cool. But we wanted to do that. I got, I got a call that said, hey, look, we're doing a celebration of life for my sister Tina up in Pennsylvania in Gettysburg, so can you make it? And I said, absolutely, I'm going to be there. So I drove up there, and I was there for a long weekend, and I took one video, and I took a picture of the house that I grew up in until I was 11 years old, and then um, I was with my driver with riding, riding with my brother-in-law as a car down these windy, curvy roads in Pennsylvania. And here's just a small clip of that. So uh, enjoy, and then we're going to get back here with Eric Kohler. Thanks again. Good night. Special guest here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Special. You're so special. I feel special. Mr. Eric Kohler here. What's the up? Voice, a voice of the Orlando Predators is gonna. I don't know if you're gonna interview me or you're gonna roast me. Or it's gonna be kind of like a jambalaya. 
I like Jim Malaya. Let's throw some stuff in a bowl and see what happens. We got Phil, Phil, our, our favorite cameraman, and our guy goes around. I haven't recognized without his uh, his yellow, yellow shirt. shirt. You can see from space. Yeah. That dude's funny right there. Yeah, he is. He was on the show last week, as a matter of fact. All right, so that was just an opening act. Now we're going to have some fun. Ron, what's up, dude? Fish on fire. What are you guys doing? You guys having fun on Monday? Yeah! yeah! COVID sucks! COVID sucks! <laughs> Got your attention there, right? All right. All right, so now you know the direction of the show, right? Does that answer your question? Perfectly. I should have took up, I should have went to the bathroom before you came up. You young too? Well, come on, Curtis. You're gonna walk on, but you will get back. Now, now, I can just scroll out here and see all this stuff. Oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be amazing. Amazing. Mary Beth Scott, she is an amazing person. Mary Beth Scott is, is awesome. Now, really, her loyalty to the, the franchise, the Predators, is really unparalleled. Seriously, you've gone through a lot of stuff with the ownership change, all that stuff, and uh, you guys worked a lot of long hours, kind of got beat up, and, and we really appreciate all you do. Now, cheers. Cheers, Mary Beth. Thanks for all you do. Right on. Right on. Without a doubt. Mary Beth is amazing. Uh -oh, uh, without a doubt. Anytime, it, I mean, we have, we have, uh, uh, hey, Mary Beth, what is his name again? Uh, your partner here, uh, Chris? No. Oh, Dan. Oh, that's not good for TV. Oh, it's not Chris, yeah. it's the other guy. Dan. That's no. great for TV. Sorry, Chris. No, Dan Skoken. I know, good I know divorce Dan, word. I know, Dan Skoken is also a season ticket salesperson. And he's fantastic. He's amazing, he's amazing. You're amazing, I'm, Pat. Uh, thanks, man. We're, we're gonna get to, we're gonna give you some love, but then we're gonna give you some salt. You can give me, you can give me all kind of stuff you want. Oh, it's all day all long. All kind of stuff you want. Mike Lobianco, I'm sorry you didn't get your bread shot last week. You should have asked for it when you were inside, not keep going outside and flirting with the girls. Where is Mike? You know, he's uh, in Port St. Lucie. Mike is my brother. Yeah, he came up to play golf with you a couple weeks ago. Yes, sir. Last weekend. Yeah, I missed, you invited me to play golf. I couldn't make it. It was kind of last minute. Yeah, I know. Hey, there's, there's Morgan, bro. Hi, Morgan. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. Yeah. Hi, Morgan. Yes. Hey, if you guys got any questions in the crowd, give me five. Give me five. <laughs> Morgan takes care of my liquid beverages tonight. Yes. Morgan does a nice job. Heather behind the bar does a nice job. Heather behind the bar. Go, Heather. Go, Heather. It's not my birthday. And what about Steven, the manager on Fish Steven on Fire? Steven, the manager of Fish on Fire is Yo, he's keeping everybody manager on order. Hey, listen, if you're inside here tonight at Fish on Fire and you're getting up to walk to go visit somebody or you're walking the facilities, please put your mask on only because that's the requirements right now. It's the new norm. You must do it because we want to keep these guys open. All right, these guys are open so they can take care of us. So please take care of them. I, I think that's good, but I want to go back on what you said there. I don't like that new norm thing. I, I, We're going to get back either. to normal. This is temporary. Is that Man, new norm stuff? No bueno. No bueno. What I, what I, hey, listen, after the election, I think maybe everything's going to get back to the oh, regular. Oh, magical vaccine. I, it's, listen, it's just people's opinion. Everybody has one. I have one. You have one. Well, there's something else everybody has one, too, you know? Yeah, I know. Everybody's <laughs> got one. They all stink. I know. Okay. Hey, listen. Let's buy Tatesville. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what you were thinking. Okay. I want a little set. Sorry. <laughs> You know what? I scroll through here so you can see different questions from the audience. Yeah, right on. So, you know, you can just, uh, I'll scroll and I'll point out. But okay. you, listen, you're Jason here Lucas. Me. Jason Lucas, yes. Polar. <laughs> Polar. There you go, Lo Bianco. <laughs> hey, man, fish and fire, man. I just love this place. This place is, I love being here, man. Thank you so much to Jay. Yeah, Jay, owner the owner. Fish on fire, man. Uh, I love being here every Monday night. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it, it is. It really yeah. is. Put your hands together for Fish on Fire. Yes. Yeah. It's just a cool name, too, right? Phillip's on fire right now. Oh, this guy. Oh, here we go. Oh, no. You see? I did not know that Phil had so much color and personality in his life. I don't know. This guy's something. I was told that, Phil, you're going to be kicked into the water tonight. Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> oh boy. Phil, left, right, left, right, left, right. Sit down! Mary Beth Scott, who is your stylist? I'll tell you what, Laura. Laura, our dance coordinator. Yes. Mary Beth Scott did her own hair and makeup tonight, just so you know. So nice. if you're looking for a stylist, Mary Beth Scott brought it tonight. So nice there you job. go. You my stylist is those public plastic bags, but it always gets caught up right around my neck area. I know, and I... I, I go for the paper so I can cut out the holes and I can breathe. I did do the Win dixie but they kept using paper and I couldn't just couldn't do it. It's too raspy on my skin. Yeah. yeah I need would. a Lubriderm or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Pat, are you ready to get to this? I know this is your show, but we're going to have a little difference here. Do it. Let's go. What do you, what do you want to talk about tonight? I, I'm here to answer your questions. Okay. Now let's do this one. Oh, my God. He's got a list. What the? If you turned yeah. around and in the doorway was a penguin with a mustache, wearing a big sombrero and a poncho, what do you think the penguin would say? Tequila for you, sir. <laughs> Tequila for you, sir. Okay, what's your spirit animal? My spirit animal is a bald eagle. A bald eagle? Yes. Does it have anything to do with under your hat? It did until five days ago. Okay, I just I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Tell me the bald eagle, that's such a wonderful because, symbol uh, of our country. The, the bald eagle, number one, takes flight, and I think that's just amazing, and he has this the bald eagle is a symbol of America, and I love America. I do too. America. I like it. It's really kind of a... That's my spirit animal. No, I like that. You're, you're straight spot on right there. Yeah. Do what I can. You do what you can. Yeah. I like it. I could have said a, a, a ferret because they're little weasels, and they go around and they steal shit, but I, I'm not that way. You know, that would have been more funny for the show. I know. I went I know. for the eagle. I mean, a little ferret. It stinks like it's steel shit. That's hilarious. I know. Little beady eyes. <laughs> but I can't do that because I wear glasses. I'm blind without them, and I don't see a ferret with glasses. You're like a mole. You mean like a, a mole? Side of no, a mole that digs up my damn sidewalk. Oh no. Aren't they blind as a bat? I would do that. Jesus. <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't seen this young lady in a while. Cycle Fever TV in the house. Good job, guys. We got That's Crazy Rand. John. Ran her birthday was just last week. What? Happy belated birthday. That is awesome. You that should try a Fred show. I'm going to tell you something. That young lady right there, no, she's probably Mike's designated driver. Oh, that I young lady right there has had two, count them, two knee replacement surgeries and is amazing. This year. Walking around two. this year. Was that a BOGO Publix? Yeah. <laughs> I saw that with the chicken subtender. Right? No, I didn't. That was knee replacement? That was a knee replacement one. Buy one, get one. Are you doing good? Yeah, buy one, get one. Are you doing okay? Yeah. That's awesome. She's amazing because she puts up with Mike. You know, that's a job in itself. You might need to get a third one. Slapping him upside the head. <laughs> hey, did you hear the good news about Publix? They're getting rid of all the stupid arrows one way, huh? They already did. They did? Yeah. There is an American spirit in here. How stupid was that? If I want my damn Triscuits, I'm going to get my goddamn Triscuits. Do it. Do it. Don't tell me. No, no, you got to turn around, sir. I'm not turning around. I got Triscuits in my hand. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I went to Publix at my Publix. Yeah. Which is on Chickasaw and Lake Underhill. Are oh, you ripping me? They took the arrows out. Yes. There's no more arrows in the aisles. I like it. Thank you, Publix. Thank you, Publix. Shopping's becoming more pleasurable. More of a pleasure, I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, so Pat, listen. You know, ever since I've met you, you've been such a positive energy. And ever since you've gotten involved with the Predators, you just, you light up. You know, this year's been disappointing about 2020, but like you're so excited about the Predators and that is how we get the legacy of the Predators back. So my hat off to you and uh, you do a great job. So tell us a little bit how you got involved with the Predators to your current role. How I got in my current role? I, I'll tell you what, let me tell you how I got involved with the Predators, all right? I'm working over at Holler Honda, all right? Love Hondas, love Holler Honda, the guys are great. My wife 
we've been we've been we've been Predator fans for a long, long, long time. Season ticket holders since 2003, I think we established. And Kenny McIntyre was Mary's my wife, Mary, her favorite player. She saw on Facebook because she's she's uh, friends with with Kenny's mom and everything on Facebook and blah blah blah. And she goes, she she texts me. She goes, Kenny's bringing back the Predators. She goes, and he's looking for people. So why don't you send him your resume? So I did. I, I you know I didn't update my resume or nothing. I just okay. sent it. You just like, sent it. Yeah, thank you, shit. I, I had a great job. I had a great job. I didn't care. You did a good and job of Holler Honda, by the way. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know that. You know that. You yeah, know, you're trying to sell me you a know car. Me from Holler Honda. You put me in the back of the trunk and say, How do you like the Honda? How do you like it? it, it it's it, like I, I can't it. breathe, Pat. For are, the you, God. are you buying the day? <laughs> It gives no meaning to trunk slam a holler Honda for love of God. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> I sent my resume out of here. I sent my resume over to, and then Kenny called me that night, and he goes like, "Hey, yeah, I'd like to set up a meeting." I said, "All right." I was, he goes, "When?" I said, "I'm off tomorrow." He goes, "Can you make it Thursday?" I said, "No." He goes, "What time tomorrow?" And I said, "I can be there at 10." That's cool. He goes, "I can't be there until 12." I said, "Well, I can be there at 10." He goes, "Okay, be here at 10." So it's like, I mean, I wasn't looking when I found that position. And I, you know, went in there and I talked to him and we, we chatted back and forth. I admired Kenny McIntyre as a football player. Yeah. Amazing, amazing TV. God, I can't say nothing bad about his football play. Right. And I will not say anything bad about his, his business model. But, um, interviewed that day, that night, he called me up and he offered me a position. I said, okay, thanks, but no thanks. Right. Twice wasn't right. And then he goes, okay, well, you know, no hard feelings. I said, no problem. The next day, I guess he expected me to say, like, hey, I'll, uh, I'll take this. And I'm going, I wasn't. I mean, I could still buy season tickets. No problem. I still love the Predators. And... I just had to make it right for me and my family. So, That's right. You know, so the next day he calls me up and we had another meeting and we hashed things out and came to an agreement and, you know, I, that was good. I said, listen, I got to give at least a 30-day notice. And he goes, I can give you two weeks. He says, I got to give a 30-day notice. Right, right, right. It's just the way I am. And, uh, oh, you, you believe in courtesy. I believe in courtesy. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Yeah. I believe in courtesy and karma. Yep, right? that's right. Pan courtesy forward. and karma. Yep. And uh, thank God Nate Starling Jr. understood the same thing whenever I came back. Because I was with the Predators last year, well, from 2019 in January. I was supposed to start in January, but didn't start until February, which should have been a sign. But And I went through half the season, and things were not just going the way I thought. Right. Not the way I liked it. A lot of things went sideways. A lot of things went sideways. Yeah. So I backed out. I felt like, okay. I'm done. But I still did. And I did. I graciously, you know, bowed out and, you know, Mr. McIntyre understood. It's all good. And, uh, but I still did so much different stuff. As you, as you well know, Mr. Yeah. Kohler, <laughs> I still did so much um, promotions and, and anything that I could do to promote the Predator name out there, I was there. On my days off from Holler Honda, because I went back and sold cars. I went back to them and every, every day off, every time I had off, I worked my schedule around to promote the Predators. I set up things like bowling with the Predators yeah, last season. It's good. Yes. You know, just like this show right here. There, just like the show here. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. I mean, you want to get into this? I mean, what I'm saying is, oh, Pat, you have completely. I live by the adage of find a way. Without a doubt. And you know, something you said earlier in the conversation, I, I think people can relate to, is that sometimes things come your way when you're not looking for them. Right. You know, so that's why you just gotta just let life go. We got some uh, response here. Our good friend Milton Staten says, what is your favorite horror movie? What scares the crap out of you? I think he was asking you. Me? Yeah, I don't know. I, you. 
My favorite this horror is your movie. interview, dude. Magic, my favorite horror movie. It scares the hell out of me. Yeah, what is it? It's that 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 Jason Friday the Thirteenth stuff, really? where it's the. Sh- 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 <laughs> You know, what about Scream? That kind of freaked me out at first. That long white mask. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. when it came out, dude. There was that freaked me out. No, wait a minute. You got to understand. After I saw the Friday the Thirteenth, I quit watching that scary shit. Well, you know, it's the same thing as Jaws did. I was in the damn ocean for a while. Look how Jaws impacted our lives, right? I still hear that damn song in the background. <laughs> hey, is that Jarrell Little? Jarell you can't Little. spell predators without the P from Pat Lobianco. Where is that? Yeah, right there. See, I'm giving you some sugar. I like it. Yeah, like Throw some yeah. spice. Jarrell, you're uh, yeah. you're my new hero, baby. All right, so <laughs> hey, random thing. How do you fit a giraffe in a fridge? You want random? I'm giving you random. Okay, at least you get a laugh out of you. Giraffe in a fridge. In a fridge. How, how big is the fridge? <laughs> we're gonna do specs. We're gonna, you know what's perfect? Gonna, gonna, this was set for a lawyer. I know. That was a, you're a little lawyer in your section. How the hell would you fit a giraffe in a fridge? I don't know. All right, let's see. Let's get something fun here. Um, describe how you'd make me a sandwich. I want a nice Italian sub. How nice are you gonna Italian set it up sub. for me, brother? First thing, what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna cut. The, the, the innards out of them. I'm going to slice it right down. Oh, you're going to slice it? I'm going to slice it right down the center. Nice. And you know what? I'm going to break it in half. You oh, know why? Like why? You know why? More meat, baby. More, more meat. meat. Uh, Morgan, I'm ready. He's ready for more beer or more meat. That was a weird segue there. I know. What kind of show is so, this? What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, then, I'm going to slap, <laughs> I'm going to slap mayonnaise on the one side. Well, actually, Miracle Whip. I'm not a big mayonnaise person. You don't like Hellman's? I like Miracle Whip. Is Miracle like Whip really a mayonnaise? No. Oh, this could no. lead into a hot dog question. Keep going. Oh, so I don't put I like mayonnaise on a damn hot dog. Well, here you go. No, that's, that's another another thing. It's a hot dog so, and a sandwich. I, I, you, put, you, put, you put the Miracle Whip. You put the Miracle Whip. It's got good flow here. <laughs> Shut up, crazy. Crazy, John. Go. You're gonna have it. You're That's gonna why have I gave the Italian sub question, huh? So what you gonna have? You're gonna have. You're gonna have. I'm gonna go. How about mustard? How about mustard? We'll, we'll go mustard. mustard. I'm mustard. Mustard. This is my sandwich, damn it. This is sandwich. You like mustard? I'm gonna slap the mustard on it. He's gonna slap, slap the, mustard. the mustard. And I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the provolone, provolone oh, cheese provolone, on there, yes, right? Yes. I'm gonna have salami, ham, uh, some uh, uh, a pepperoni on there. I'm gonna put some pepperoni on there. You know, <laughs> Wait, you're stopping the hand movement. This is my sandwich. Have, yeah, we're gonna have capicola. Capicola. Have capicola yeah, on there. Absolutely. And some more cheese. Some yeah. more cheese on there. Some more provolone cheese on there. We're gonna have more meat. Meat. More meat. Meat, meat, meat. Tonight's meat and green, apparently. Well, fish on fire. On the top, on the top of the bun right there, you're gonna have the oil and vinegar. You're like the little drizzle? So it drizzles down on it. Little drizzle. And I'm gonna slice it agno wise, not agno. Oh, I like that. Ag- diagonal wise, not flat like that, diagonal wise. This, this is fantastic. The hand gestures are awesome. Hey. Hey. All right, so what's your favorite What's your favorite potato chip? I kind of like Ruffles because they have ridges. Oh, Ruffles and ridges? What type of salsa do you like with your nachos? You know what? The kind of salsa I like with my nachos is Don Julio's. Don Julio. I love Don Julio. He said good tequila as well as Don Julio. Don Julio's. Yes. I think Steven said he was going to bring you a bottle. He's doing such a great job. Thank you, Steven. Ah, Steven. Oh, Steven, so Steven is heading back to the bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom is now on fire. No, I wasn't there. <laughs> I wasn't there. Dude, that was a great sandwich. Question. Dude, how many people have asked you how you're going to make me a sandwich? Uh, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> you, you did the, the whole thing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Actually, Mary asked me too. Oh, she but did. I don't think she's. I don't think. I don't Second think she said, how, how are you right going to make me a sandwich? I don't think she said, how are you going to make me a sandwich? I think Second she said, fiddle. make me a sandwich. Second fiddle. All right, let's see here. If a lion and a tiger fought, who would win and why? This is another lawyer question. Man, the tiger is such a badass. You're going tiger yeah, for 500? I'm tiger, yeah, I'm going tiger. Gun for tiger. I like that. Tiger. If you were given $5 cash right now, how could you turn that into $100 tomorrow at the same time? 
I'm sorry. Repeat the question. If I gave you five dollars cash right now, and I'm saying, Pat, I want you to meet me back on Fish on Fire. You need to bring me back a hundred bucks, but you can only use that five bucks. How resourceful would you be as being a marketing professional? And you can't sell drugs. Just say no to drugs, okay? It's a kid show. Use a printer? I like that. Use a See, printer. She's finding a way. Yeah, that's, that's a print. 25 See? years in prison, but she got you 100 bucks. I mean, 100 bucks. That must be that print shot. <laughs> that's a print shot working, baby. That is the print shot. All right, here we go. All right, Chef Aaron, if Pat was a tree, what tree would it be? I'd be an oak. Oak? Oh, oak? I'd be an oak. You sound like you have an Irish big, accent. They are, uh, I've been watching The Outlander. <laughs> you said oak. It wasn't oak, or was that Scottish? No, it was Scottish. Maybe I need to lose the loo. Uh, You'd be an I, oak? I, I would be an oak. I would be a, a big, strong oak. That's a weird word. Give me a weird word that uh, kind of like snack or puke that you think is kind of weird. Barf. Barf. Wow. Charming. Charming? Charming is a weird word. You think charming? I think moist is very strange. <laughs> Look, I get a thumbs down, but Steven gives me a double thumbs up. The thumbs win it. <laughs> you know, this is an interactive crowd. If you guys want to ask something, this is, this is, we're all in. Hey, so Billy just smack, smacked a house at Winter Park Pines? James, a.k.a. Billy? Right? Is that right? Billy? Is that that oh, guy? no, no, no. That's, that's on the first, that's on the first time my good friend, James. Was it a good, see, that's why you don't now put your is, ball, your name on your ball. This is going out there now. This is going out there now. My, my, my wife and I, my wife and I, can you hear me? My wife and I, Mary met, my wife Mary met James and Dottie, very good friends of ours, yeah. years ago at Chili's because Mary and a, a friend of hers, a, a co-worker of hers, stopped in at Chili's after work and, and they were sitting there drinking, of course, because she's a little Bianco. And <laughs> She noticed these two fine people sitting over there drinking and laughing and having such a good time that she went over and she said, you guys are, are so, cute. so cute. Can we sit so with you? Cute. Can we sit with you? Oh, so, darling, James, you're so cute. So they sat there. Oh, are. So, you are, you are. Sorry, sorry. No, Nothing to see here. Oh, she'll come up and kick your ass. Oh, I know. That's why. <laughs> you know, hey. But, so, <laughs> whenever, long story short, then that night, whenever I got off of work and then came home, and she was sitting there, she goes, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, I'm off tomorrow. She goes, well, you're playing golf. And I go, what? Okay, cool. She goes, no, you're golfing with somebody I just met. His name is James. And I'm going, like, okay, cool. So that's how I first met James was, she described him as a, no, I I didn't say this. He's an older gentleman. <laughs> older gentleman. Sometimes older. are things that you keep to yourself, Pat. Right? It wasn't me. That was Mary Sandy. So, you know. Now keep in mind, keep in mind. So Dottie made a quick move on James. Oh yeah. I can see she's got talent. She she's hey, gonna chase you out. She went for a sugar daddy. She like a cougar. She's much <laughs> No, she's much younger than he is. <laughs> so so James and I are playing golf at, at over this establishment over there off of 436 in Ranger. It's and, called Winter Park Pines. Oh, Winter Park Pines. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so we're on that. We're on the 70. Oh, look at this. Oh no. Oh yeah. Mary Beth, Scott, gonna you want a refill? They're gonna flow. So we got more bread shots coming. But so Woo. James. Phil. James marks his ball with a big J right there on the ball. Big J. 
He gets up in the tee box, gets up there, and he swivels his hip, you know, like they do, swivels his hips. He swivels his hip? Yeah. And I like it. Gets in motion. Grips it and rips it. And this thing goes straight on down. <laughs> and it hooks so much. Did it, James? And it hit the top of a house. Good sound? Was it a good sound, Lisa? Another good another house. And then a, I think he hit a threeper. I think he hit three houses. Oh, so you're right. skipping rocks with golf balls now. Yeah. And that's kind of cool, right? He's going like, oh my God. He's going like, oh my God, they're going to get me. They're going to get me on that. And I said, what do you care about, Billy? <laughs> Because he's got his initial J on That's the That's smart. You put a different name? Yeah, I like that. So I nicknamed him Billy, and for the last 10 years, I've been calling him Billy. Well, see, now I'm confused. Is it Dottie and James or Dottie and Billy? It's Dottie and whoever she wants to be with. Her. See, I can remember Billy better because Dottie, Billy. Whatever she says, I'm standing away. She already gave me the evil eye. I'm good to go. Dottie, we're good. I'm looking this way all night. Um, speaking of golf, what is your lowest round that you've ever scored? The lowest round I ever scored, and it's funny you ask because you never remember the highest one, but you always remember the lowest Absolutely. one. Absolutely. I shot a 74 yes. at Water Pines. When was this? Oh, my God. Years ago. Years ago. It's been years ago, <laughs> you ask. <laughs> I I used to I used to run a, I used to work at a pawn shop, all right? And I had such a great crew that worked for me that I would go in early, get off at like one o'clock, go to the golf course. So I was golfing two, three times a week. Yeah, so that's when you get good. You know, and you just play. You know, and and that's it was it's probably been about. 13 years since I shot something that low. Well, I, you know what? I'm going to take you to Congo River, and you're going to break your course record. I'll even, we can actually throw some dogs and some gators. Is it the Congo River over on Altima? Yes, it's in a van down by the river. And i got to ask you a question now. I didn't do it. Are you going to keep that bread shot from me all night? Oh, my bad. I'm going to give you the larger one. Cheers. Oh, no. We're going to do it together. Oh, we're going to do it together? There's, is there visual evidence? There's going to be a... Uh, click to the left. Click to the left? There you go. You have a click? Cheers, Pat. Love you, buddy. The other Moon River. These were not mine. Those were mine. You using the whole fist stock? Just, oh, Jesus. Did you see this cock? <laughs> Wait, I don't know what he said. <laughs> no, I do. That's the best part. That's why you got to keep going in radio. You got to keep going, keep going. Oh, oh this is a good. That's right. You do a radio show too, yeah, don't you? I got a radio show, bro. How come I was never invited to your radio show? No. What was that? What you kind of set up there? Right there. Yeah, that's just all right, Jarrell. That's serious. Eric went there. What's Nick Green say? Let me see what Nick Green said. Eric went there. Uh, Ooh, I like this one, Jason Lucas. What ports of call do we want to hit on the Predators Championship cruise? <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. That's a good question for Mr. Ron Tradico. Yeah. Hey, Ron, when we go to the Predator cruise, what ports of call we yeah, want to hit? Yeah, what ports of call? We're going to Mexico. <laughs> COVID-1, COVID-2, COVID-3. Okay, that's that's not being fun. That's not being fun. Not playing nice. I was hoping maybe Cosimo. Oh, there you go, Cosimo. That's right. We can do that. COVID-1, 2, and 3. I think I really was envisioning that answer. But I like it, Ronnie. Thanks for mixing it up. <laughs> Jarrell Little got a question there for you. He, he said, uh, Pat, what you bet you set up for players meet meant the most to you? Honestly, I think the um, the one at Boardwalk Bowl last well, in 2019. That's because we had such a huge turnout. We had the coach at the time come out there. We had we had uh, uh, Doug Miller, the coach at the time. We had uh, all the players, we had new players, but what really meant the most to me is I got to meet one of the players, well actually two of the players, that really touched mine and my wife's heart. What was that? That was, um, well, Kamari Alcorn, we call Rhino. And 
Rhino, your predators! Rhino, I love Rhino. We still keep in contact. We FaceTime. I actually I FaceTime with him this past weekend. This weekend, uh, we still stay in touch. And um, uh, Justin Marcus, another one of the players from uh, the 2019 season. Uh, I have his jersey, as a matter of fact. That's cool. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's, so the Boardwalk Bowl was pretty at the top of the list. Bowl was, was really, really touching to me because fans came out to that, the players came out to that, and that's one of the reasons why I started Pred Talk. Yeah, I think this is good. You because know. you know what? Even though we're not playing a season this year, which is kind of disappointing, but I think that right now, if you lead up and just start kind of like setting the trail for next year, We'll, we'll get back to normal, and I oh, think it's going to be out. Yeah, this yeah be we're going to be there. We're going to be there. Oh, but I mean, congratulations on this show. This is awesome. I saw one funny guy here on Facetime. Scroll down to his head. Somebody said, uh, "Eric, I brought the marshmallows and see no roasting." Where is that? Down below. Did you see that? Well, I tell you what, so many people are so funny on social media. I got your marshmallow, pal. Hey, it's that photographer. <laughs> oh, Phil. Oh, is that Phil? Yeah, Phil McCracken from Penske. Unbelievable. You need to meet Dr. Ben Dover later, buddy. We're not sure. Phil. Uh, we're not Are, sure yet. Do you have a question for bachelor number one or bachelor, bachelor number, number two? Bachelor number one. Door number one, door number two. Bachelor number one or bachelor number two? Are you interested? In That's that? hilarious. I'm just asking. Maybe we should do this more often. And yes, sir, Nick Green. We are deep into the predator shot. Yes, <laughs> Nothing to see here. Hopefully, our camera guys move that away. <laughs> bad cough, so it's doing robotussing. <laughs> it's a DM version, so I don't get drowsy, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, where would you go on your, uh, where would you take Mary on, like, the dream vacation? Money's not an issue, like, would it be a cruise, a safari, uh, going up to Congo River on Colonial? Um, what would it be? Man, right now... And I, I'm not gonna lie to you. What I mean, your fancy? there's so many, so many places. Well, there's a couple places. First off, I'd love to take her to New York City because she's never, ever been to New York City. And she'll never, ever go to New York City. I know, because you're gonna be there for two weeks. So, <laughs> how about Italy? I, you know, Italy is beautiful. And I'd love to go there too. Go where? Because I am Italian, Italy. Oh, you gotta go to your home country. You know. But we've been watching The Outlander. You, you've seen the movie. And, and Scotland is such a beautiful country. I'd love to go over to Scotland. You gotta go there. We went, you know? we had buddy, we had a golf trip last year. Went to St. Andrews, went to the northern part of Scotland. Or Scotland. Don't tell her about the golf courses. Oh my god, it's such an amazing experience. But the crazy part is when you go over to the Isles, okay, they speak English, but you really can't understand what they say. <laughs> but the more scotch that you drink, it's like they speak perfect English. It's the same thing happens when I go to Mexico. I didn't know what they meant about that worm thing, man. I just went crazy, man. Oh, yeah. Have you ate the worm? Yes. In Mexico? Oh, yes. Oh, the levato. Oh, it's not good. You ever heard of brown water? <laughs> okay, too much to see here. Too much. All too right, much. so Batman or Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Who's going to win? Spider-Man. Why? Spider-Man, is, is, he's got spidey powers. Yes. And he can, he's so much faster than Batman. But Batman's, Batman's got, got to rely on, on uh, gadgets. Gadgets, man. So you're saying, you said Spider-Man. Does anybody think Batman can take Spider-Man? Yes. Yes. Okay, why? Yeah. Give me an answer, reason why. Multi-talented. Multi That's coming from Phil Marshmallow. And he's a, and he's a photographer. And he's a photographer in his, in his, in his alter ego. Well, apparently he's a, he's a great fisherman. Am I right, Phil? He's a photographer in his alter ego. <laughs> Peter Parker. Hey, so what would your book be about if somebody wrote a book about you? What would the title of your book be? <laughs> I learned a book. What was the answer? All heart. 
All hearts? That's what my wife says, yeah. all heart. That sounded like a little sentimental right there. Oh, right? I kind of got a little soft and fuzzy. Do you need a tissue? Yeah, I kind of do. Can no. Morgan tissue too? No, nothing, nothing serious. Just give me someone's mask, it'll be yes. fine. <laughs> Amazed. Oh, I would say amazed. Amazed? Amazed. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Huh. Amazed. Why would you call it amazed? I would call it amazed because <laughs> I'm amazed I'm still friggin' alive <laughs> at 59 years would old. Would that be your foreword? That's fantastic. Amazed. Amazed. That's kind of cool. You know. Um, where were you born? I was born in York, Pennsylvania. York, Pennsylvania. Wasn't there a great battle in the Revolutionary War? There was. There was. Do you know where I lived? I was born at York, but do you know where I lived? I in lived a van in, down by the river. I lived in a little town called Heidlersburg. Heidlersburg. Heidlersburg, which is seven miles, seven miles east of Gettysburg. Oh, battle. boy, yeah. So I, until history. I was 11 years American old. American history. Yes. Until I was 11 years old, I lived just outside the Gettysburg Battlefield. You know, that's crazy you say, I was born on Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Right. And we need another Abraham Lincoln in this time. But you know, when I went to Gettysburg, because I wrote so many stories about that, the eerie quietness of the battlefield at Gettysburg was ominous. I rode my bicycle. Now, this is that back in the day. This is back in the day when you were, keep in mind, I was nine, ten years old, and I could ride my ten-speed bicycle. Ten-speed bicycle? I heard that a lot. Yeah. That was, hey, that was my ten. No, that was the thing, man, a Schwinn. I think it was a Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> we could afford a Schwinn. So, just saying. I did a Schwinn, so. And, uh, <laughs> but this is back, I was nine, ten years old, and my parents would let me ride my bicycle seven miles and spend the whole day riding through the Gettysburg battlefield. That's pretty special. And then come back, as long as I was back before the lights came on, well, we didn't really have street lights. We had lanterns. Um, you didn't do no lanterns? Before they lit the lanterns. Oh my gosh, did you say lantern? Yeah, lay out. That's a good word, lantern. I have, what is that called? O O A F. That's where I'm amazed that you brought out lantern. Yeah. Is that in the book? It will be. <laughs> yeah. You know, amazed. If, actually, right now, if you got a second. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna show you the house that I grew up into. I was 11 years old, and in one of the back roads. You got a picture of this? Uh, yes, in Pennsylvania. Did you show the so, lantern? Do I pass it to you, it? What? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've never seen that lady it's in my life. Down. You got to take that picture down. I've never seen that lady. Okay. That's the house. I'm, huh. That right there. That's the house that I lived in. I don't see a that's lantern. Inside. No, that's not there. This is this was taken two weeks ago. You got to remember. Yeah, you got to remember. Did milk get delivered to your front lawn? No, actually, it was in the back porch. The milk jugs? That's the front of the house right there. Yeah, that's a nice little swing. Man, I'll tell you what, it, it's it hasn't changed a lot. It hasn't <laughs> changed a lot. But that's where I lived when I was a, a wee babe. A wee babe. Just a wee babe? Yeah. And so, how, how, where'd you go to high school? Did where you go to high school? You went to high school in Pine Hills. I went to Evans. So wait, you Evans went from York, school. PA, to this home to? To Pine Hills, Florida. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I went to, I went Did to, not know that. I went to, uh, we, when we came down, I went to middle school, which was called Robinswood Junior High School. Yeah. That's where I got into sports. You got it. Did you play sports? Oh, did I play sports? What did you play? I, my, my love was football. Yeah. But I am five foot six, hundred at the time, one fifty. All right, five foot six, one fifty. Yeah. So and I played, I played running back and I played a DB. Yeah, because they couldn't see it. But listen, my my coach at the time. <laughs> couldn't see the smart ass. So you gotta my, keep going. My right? coach couldn't see me. My coach couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> he walked right into it. See, I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> my coach couldn't see me, so he threw me in at DL. I was a defensive lineman. You were a defensive lineman. Five foot six, 150 pounds. I played defensive lineman for the Robinswood Archers under Coach Ernie Sharp. Is that one? 
did she just give you an awe? I can't, I can't roast you back on that one. How in the hell were you a D lineman? It wasn't Ernie Sharp. It's Ernie Swift. I'm sorry. Ernie Swift. God that's, rest. See, God that's rest what I was soul, saying, man. James. God rest his soul. No, Ernie Swift. Coach Ernie Swift. So you love football. Football's in your blood. Football's in my blood. And that's why we got you with football the press. Oh man, without. How that. about that? OrlandoPredatorFootball.com. Ooh yeah. Ooh yeah. Hey, what's the phone number, Mary Beth? 386 324 624 3731 3731 That's not bad after a couple of punch yeah, there, Mary she Beth. Knows Hold on. She knows her own. She knows oh, her own. Just, no, she only had a half. Oh, I love it how Mary Beth is just holding conversations oh, here we go. Here with, with Laura. You know you're you know not my style. Uh, you know my style. Uh, <laughs> the lantern's in the Smithsonian. That's a brother comment right there. I know, right? <laughs> you know it. You know it. All right, Pat, if you found an elephant in your backyard, what would you do with it? Sell it, keep it, ride it, eat it? What'd you do? I'd ride it. You'd ride it? Yeah. I can't sell it because, you know I mean, it's in my backyard. I'm not going to eat it because what does elephant taste like? <laughs> Tastes like chicken. Well, um, let me see here. <laughs> if you were a movie character, who would you be and why? If I was a movie character, yeah. and this is no lie, no lie, man, Top Gun, I'd be fucking Maverick. Excuse my friend, I'd be Maverick. I'd be Maverick because he's a badass <laughs> on there. He would be. I, I am right there. I am Maverick all the way. You're Maverick. Yeah. With a bald eagle painted on your chest. Right there, right there on my chest. <laughs> I can I, see the scene. I, I have it right there, oh, baby. This, this is outstanding. What else we got here? Good show, good banter. Take another bread shot. Battlefield was awesome. Great country. Of I course, that's my brother. That's my brother grew up there as well. He graduated high school in Biglerville High School. And Biglerville. That's a, that's a real name, Biglerville. Piglerville. Yeah, home of the canners. You know why it's the canners? Why is it a canner? Musselman's applesauce was the home right there ah. in Biglerville, Pennsylvania. I thought there was a reference like uh, yes, sir. Christmas yes, Vacation. Sir. My brother, my brother the was Crapper's full. My Clark. brother, my brother Mike was a standout baseball player. Standout. Yes. Absolutely. So, what were you like in high school? What like did I like in high school? You're a chill, energy guy now. Man, I, what would you like in high school? Can we be honest? Well, that's. If not, I'll make something up. I was. I wasn't much like in high school because I, 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 I stepped out in 10th grade. You stepped I, out? I stepped out in 10th grade and I stepped out in 10th grade. I'm going to lie to you. I stepped out. I stepped out in 10th grade. It wasn't for me and I got a job and started working. I uh, got my GED before before I turned 18. You know, you're a find a way type of guy. You know, it's just the way it is. And I like it. You know, I like people to know me. I ain't going to lie to you. I like that. How was I in high school? Well, I mean, the way you've received me and welcomed me, I, I can see that. So how were you in high school in terms of your persona? Your in persona? My persona? <laughs> I was... Were you I, a social dude? Oh, without a doubt. Are you, without a doubt. Did you party in high school? Put it this way. Oh, boy. When when we would skip school, uh, <laughs> this is never prep as well. Do you notice? When we would skip school, it would always end up at my house. <laughs> what was at your house that brought everybody from high school skipping school? A good time. A good time. All right, we're on TV. So I was always. I was always. I was always. You know what? I mean, this, you got to remember, this was back in the. Uh, Did you get in trouble high school? 80s. No, I, early no. 80s or late 80s? No, listen. When I was in junior high school, junior high school is where I got my trouble. Um, junior high school. That was like air quotes right there. You yeah, see this, that? Is, this is air quotes. <laughs> and, and when I was in junior high school, when I was in, I think it was eighth grade. Maybe it was eighth grade. Yeah, eighth grade. I skipped like my sister and I. God love you, Tina. Um, we skipped like the three quarters of the first whole year. Hmm. How were your grades that year? I passed. <laughs> you passed. I passed. You're a finding a way type of guy. Listen, I, I mean, it's up. I got it up here. It's good, you know. But I just, I just, it was time to party. 
We had, we had just moved to Florida. I was 11 years old, and when I was 12 years old, I was in eighth grade. And we moved to Florida. I had a swimming pool in the backyard. Yeah, you could have a pool. Got to make friends. Made friends and had fun. That's I like what we did. Having fun. So now, what is your current role with the Predators? What would be your official title for the Predators as we get gear up for 2021 season? My official title is the Executive Director of Promotions, Sales, and Sponsorships. Nice. Might have to use smaller font to get that on a uh, business know, card, but I like it. I know. What I like to say is, I'll do whatever it takes yeah, that's right. to make to make this team, to make the Orlando Predators successful. I like that's that. what I do. All right, that's, that's my goal. And, and that's 100 percent because again, doing this show with all our sponsors up here, you can see this is a good first step. What What are some of your goals? Obviously, Mary Betts does a great job with sales of tickets, but what are some of your benchmarks and goals? This COVID's going to go away um, for this next season. Um, what are some goals for you that you set to do on promotion? Something that really gets you excited of getting the fans back and really let's start doing this thing right, Predator style. One of my goals is, I mean, thank you, Fish on Fire, every Monday night. Fish on Fire. Fish on Fire. Fish on Fire. Fish on Fire. We are, you know, we're still. Here. Yeah, Woo! there we go. That's They're on fire. Ticket holders right back there. I like that. I like it a lot. One of our goals is, I mean, without a doubt, doing, doing, come on, doing a print talk Monday nights here at Fish on Fire. But I also want to get more sponsors involved so that we can do promotions every night of the week. Yeah. Saturdays, Sundays, it doesn't matter. Yeah, get that you know, I, I, That's what I do. I yeah. mean, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for is just to promote. But, but you'll get, get it, though. It just oh, takes some time. It, it doesn't take just me. It takes everybody. Yep. It takes word of mouth. I mean, because, listen, we 2016, they folded. The Predators folded. Yeah. And thank God, 2019, you know, Kenny McIntyre brought it back. And he... Even bigger, thank you God, that he brought Nate Starling yeah, Nate with Starling, him. Yeah. Because Nate Starling held on to it and is bringing it back because he loves this sport so much. That's what you get to have. He right loves there. the Predators so much that he is bringing it back. Yep, he's and got the help of Ron. Ron's Nate, helping to bring it back. Good job, Ron. He's got the help of Mr. Ron Trudico and the Trudico family. I like and, it. Well, one word answer, man. And, and, and this year, Pretty cool. we have an outstanding coach. Thank ben Bennett, God. where did you go? Mr. Ben Bennett. Hey, Ben, we how are you, coach? A, Good to see you, brother. We've got a coach right Welcome now back, boss. that has an offensive mind that will put points on the board. And well, he's just a good coach. And, 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 and he's got the coaching. It, you know, is backup for the defense that will keep them out of the end zone. That's what we need, Coach you know, down back. But plus, he also has the history of the Preds, and that's what we need to bring it back. We've said it over and over again about <laughs> Mr. Ben Bennett's two ben Bennett. one minute miracle. One minute it was, miracle. It was like 50 seconds, not one even a minute. And we have our long he time runs. our long time equipment manager. He's we here got, in the house. Well, we got Tom supporting Predator shirt. Yes, sir. Thank Tommy so Fresh. Much. Tom did so much last year in terms of we didn't get the pads on time. You were screwing around, Tom. If they even understood how we even had a season last year for your efforts behind the scene, Tom, you're the man, dude. How many years were the Preds? All right, cool. We appreciate your service, brother. You know what Tom does, though? I mean, you say, you say, thank you for your service, Tom. Tom, not only just for home games, gets everything ready, the jerseys on the on the on the pads and the helmets and the and the labels and the, and the Predator logo on the helmets. Tom drives. If we're playing in New Jersey, Tom loads everything in his van and trailer and drives all the way there. 
He doesn't apply. That. We don't. We don't apply that stuff. Tom makes sure because Tom wants to make sure it's right. Tom is a dedicated predator employee, without a doubt. See, there we go. Get a little sugar, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much. You know, Brother, I'm, you don't get enough. You don't get enough credit. And see, I appreciate you. See, and so does Nate, and so does Ron. Yeah, I mean that's that's the biggest thing. I'm a big proponent because uh, as many years I announced UCF football, uh, I retired from them this year after doing 20 years, 19 years of football. So you retired from there? Yeah, I stepped away for this year. There's too much unknown. There's a lot of stuff going on in my family, my business, and uh, I paid my due. 20 years, that's a long time these days. Yeah, it is. And I created the culture energy out there, but UCF football, always close to my heart, once a night, always a night. What I'm saying is I was a TV host a few years for inside UCF football, and what, the reason I love this show is that we always had features of people behind the scenes, the ownership, the equipment managers, the cheerleaders, because there's so many behind the scenes, the, the photographers, the ticket sales, there's so many things that go behind running a franchise, and sometimes just people take it for granted, and, and I like to take the time to thank those people, so I think that's pretty cool. Without a doubt. Did, did you ask me? Yes, without a doubt, yes, yes, yes. Everybody behind the scenes for the Orlando Fires and everybody behind the scenes here at Fish on Fire. Fish on Fire! You predators by Fish on Fire! Go predators. Go predators. Oh, there you go, Dottie. I'm back in the good graces. When I used that other animal name earlier, I thought she was going to jump over the table. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, that's fantastic. But you know what? Let's bring it up again one more time for Fish on Fire. Fish on Fire. Listen, if you guys are out here, thank you. Yes, Fish on Fire. Fish on Fire, Morgan, Heather, Stephen, Joe, and Jay. Nice job, Morgan. I like that buffalo shrimp. Who did I miss? Did I miss somebody? Who's back with Heather? We said Heather. Heather, and who's behind with you? Jewin? You and I was close, man. I was like, damn. Okay. That, that's what they Sorry, said. That's what they said up in Pennsylvania. They said, hey, are you and coming over here? Yeah, it's the two youths. The two what? The two youths. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you? I didn't do it. How Bread Talk got started? No, I didn't. You know what? That's a good question. So, Pat, how did Bread's Talk get started? <laughs> you know, that's a great question. Thank you. I sound like I sound like the commissioner. That's a great question. That's a great question. Why is the Big Ten not playing football, Commish? That's a great question. <laughs> we're we're going to get to that. <laughs> the way, the reason we started Bread Talk, it was, it was, uh, oh my God. 2020, <laughs> all over again. Where lanterns were inside the fish on fire restaurant. Exactly. But we weren't, we weren't sure. The season was postponed. And Nate Starling and Ron Tredico and the Tredico family. Tredico family? Yes, Tredico family. They're going like, you know, we gotta do something. You know, we gotta do something to keep the, you know, word out there. Yeah. Because, listen, after the last season, the 2019 season, the two and 12, the debacle. That's a good word, debacle. We didn't bring that up earlier. It was a debacle. It was a debacle. It was a debacle. <laughs> you know, it's like, we gotta do something. So, my wife and I actually Mary LoBianco, we put our heads together. And we said, get the word out there. Got to get the word out there. So I got this here. This is called a step and repeat. Step and repeat. Step and repeat. I got one of these at the house as well. Set it up out in my man room. Because I have a man room. You have a man room. I have a man attic. Listen, I have listen. I have five daughters and nine grandbabies. Oh, five God. daughters. I need a man room. All right. Yeah, that's going to say. Good Lord. All right. So... Set it up, and <laughs> this is funny because how we came up with Pred Talk was my wife and I. We said, "Okay, we're gonna come up with something. We're gonna uh, you gotta get an announcement out there. Just yeah, you gotta get, the get an out. announcement. You gotta get the word out. Get it. Get the word out." So I'm. I got this recorder. I have a, a tripod. 
and a remote, and I'm going, I love these stories, I'm pressing the, re you know, record, stop, record, stop, record, and of course, you know, you're getting all these up here, and uh, my wife comes out there, and she's got this, what is it? It's a poster board. Nice. And she goes, poster board? what if I write it down Cute for card. you? What if I write it down for you and I hold it up? And I'm going, oh, this is before I had my tripod. I had no tripod. <laughs> She's holding the camera and holding the, the tripod. Funniest shit ever. That's, that's how things get started. Funniest ever. And uh, so she wrote it down. It looks so professional. But the camera kept going up and down. So I found this two clips. I found a, like a lanyard with two clips. And I got my wife standing there with a, a, a two by five or whatever it was. Yeah. Board with this handwritten cue card out there. I still have it to this day at the house. And she clipped it around her neck and held it. That's awesome. And we still went through like five different things. And after that, I'm going like, okay, that was recorded. It wasn't live. We came up with, what should we call this? It's, it's Predators Talk. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about the Predators. It's yeah, Predators Talk. talk. Yeah, so we got like, all right, let's just, how about... Pred talk. It's pred talk. Pred talk. Go Preds. Or Mary Beth. I got it from Mary Beth. Mary Beth goes, go Preds. I go, pred talk. So that's how pred talk That's pretty started. cool. That's pretty cool. So when, what, what month was that? Was it this year? Oh, Obviously. yeah. When did, when did the idea hatch for Preds talk? Pred. Was it pre or post-COVID? Pre. Before. Pre. Before. We were still cool. going. We were still doing. We were still doing the. Man, I tell you what. When we first started it out, it was still go season, go season, go season. Well, then you know what? Give it up for Pat Lobianco and Mary Lobianco, and here we are we're at uh, Fish on Fire. And now you got Cycle Fever TV. These Cycle, guys are magical. Cycle Fever TV has always been in our in our in our. Um, our court. But I then mean, when they know, show up, they have all they have this stuff, like and I have no idea. Right? And it all works. Work. And they just put it on the table. <laughs> IT John's like, hey man, we're not up five. You were coming on five minutes, but you know what? We'll get it done, dude. We'll get it done, and we're getting it done. Without a doubt. This, this is pretty cool. I'll give this to you. I know this is your show, but give me. Let me have your brother's uh, message here. This is pretty cool. You'll like this family of Lobiancos. He goes, this is from Mike, his brother. What a year, Pat. You made something out of nothing. Proud of you, bro. Go Preds. Yeah. You know, and this is all going to grow, Pat. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, the, I mean, predators, the predators aren't going nowhere. I'm, I'm, God, I want to I be there till the end. But this is just a small part of it. Yeah. It takes more than just me. It takes more than just you. Yeah, no, I get it. You know, it takes a lot of people. You gotta just, I mean, you know. Find a way. You gotta find a way, man. You gotta, you gotta believe. You gotta believe in the Predators. You remember the Predators of old. We're coming back. You know, it's. We're predators are coming back. Predators are coming back. I like it. <laughs> hey, so how much time do we got, Pat? Because I want to see if any we of the crowd wants to ask. We got as much time as you want. Do you guys get a funny question? Cycle Fever TV, know I'm Pat from behind the scenes. You're, we're out? Okay, we're out. Psycho Fever TV says we're here for an hour and a half already. Well, we can talk. That's what we do. We talk. Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. Any last thoughts, Pat? Anything that uh, we still got a little time? We're out. Okay. Tell us something. Tell us something crazy, stupid you've done in your life and oh nobody else God. knows about it. Because <laughs> now you're going to have lots of people to know about it. Here, here's something. That I was. Um, Actually, I lived in Mount Alto, Pennsylvania, and I was seven years old. Seven years old. Seven years old, and I had, uh, you know, the bikes with the the, uh, sister, the the handlebars that come up. Yeah, the handlebars. Yeah, the yeah, funky like, bars. Like, yeah, like, like the, you know, ape, ape hand, ape arm, or whatever you want to call it. Like a Harley. And yeah, and uh, 
<laughs> and a banana seat. Banana seat. <laughs> Again, banana seat on my bicycle? No, yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I'm just, about. just trying to throw some flavor. Just throw some flavor. You're, some young, flavor. you're a young boy. I'm 87 years old, sir. I know, but you hold it well. Thank you. From so all we're going down a hill. We, as in me and my bicycle. Yeah. And I'm going like, I had epiphany. Epiphany. That's yeah. another good word. I'm, I'm going down this hill and I'm going like, this is some cool shit right here. <laughs> Over the top. Legs over the top. Of the handlebars. Oh, the handlebars. And I slid, I slid myself up <laughs> so where there's nobody behind me, but I'm sitting on the handlebars and I'm going down this hill. And the hill kind of curves a little bit to the um, right, but straight ahead was a barn. And here comes the banana seat from the back. And here I came through and smashed into that barn. <laughs> I haven't heard the word barn in a very long time, but you rode your bicycle into the barn. Was it no, 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 no. I rode it through. Rode through the barn. Uh, barn. Because I went through that first door. I thought someone throws you into the bus, so you literally ran through no, the bus. No, sir. I went through that door. Through <laughs> the barn with your banana seats. Yeah. And that was a shrimp. Give me a crazy thing that you do. What's a funny thing for you? What makes you laugh? What makes me laugh? My wife makes me laugh. Okay, that's a good answer. She's sitting right there. All right. All right, if Mary's not sitting there, what is crazy stuff that you do that makes you laugh? My brother Frank used to make me laugh. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What do you do? And he was just funny as hell. Just have like crazy <laughs> idiosyncrasies? He was just like, yeah, I mean, there was a thing around, there was a thing for the longest time that I was the funniest one in the family. You know, because there's six kids in my family. There's four boys and two girls, right? And it's like, oh, I was always the funniest one? No. My brother Frank was the funniest one. Well, you're a good, you're a good oh, dude. Without a doubt, he was the funniest one. Anything else you want to cover while we're interviewing Pat Lobianco? As far as covering, no. I mean, I, I, I do Any want shout to throw outs? out. I want to shout out again to Mary Beth Scott. Yeah, good girl. Out here tonight and coming all the way from the land. I mean, you There's didn't have to do that. There's Phil in the back. You didn't have to do that, Mary Beth, but I do love you so much for coming out here. Hey. Don't throw that at him, Mary Beth. Wow. That would actually be good YouTube TV. Can we switch these cameras? Because yeah, I think there's going to be something happening on Fish on Fire. Okay. Phil is um, this on fire. Oh my God. Mary, hey, Nate, Mary Beth is on her third bottle. No, no. She's having a fresca. Only a fresca. Kidding, Nothing Nate. to see here. I'm kidding, Nate. Um, Ginger no. ale? Mary Beth, thank you so much for everything that you do. Yeah. And for putting up with me. Yeah, I am. Because I know I throw a lot of crap at you. I know I put a lot of crap at you. Uh, but you handle it like a trooper, and you're the best. I love you. It's awesome. Um, listen, if you guys, if you're looking for season tickets, even if you're not looking for season tickets, call Mary Beth. Whatever it is. What is it? If you don't want season tickets, don't call me. Okay? Mary Beth. Okay. 386-624-3731. You heard that, right? It's true, and even if you don't want season tickets, I'll tell you why you need them. Even if you don't want season tickets, Mary Beth will tell you why you have to have them. Trudico family with a shot from the side. Exactly. And don't forget our website, OrlandoPredatorsFootball.com. Without a doubt, you can get your season tickets right there, and also, you know, no, that's single game. I'm sorry, you got to call Mary Beth for season Call Mary Beth, 386. Uh, shout out. Hey, look, I'm, Crazy I'm, John. I'm, I'll, I'll let you close it out, but I'm going to go, I'm going to show all my shout outs. I want to shout out right now to Second Fever TV. Yeah, Second Fever TV. John, I think John, Mike, man, thank you so much for Good job, guys. tonight. You guys are the best. I love you. Uh, What's that, Uganda? Is that? Wakanda. Wakanda, you know. I think that means love forever or something. Um, no, that's not. What it means. Just nah, keep going, Pat. This, is, this we got to keep rolling. But. <laughs> Listen. I 
Show and take us home to it. Ron Tredico. Tredico. Thank you, sir. Coach Ben Bennett. Coach Ben Bennett for coming. How about the fish on the fire, people? Fish on fire. Thank fish you, Morgan. On fire. Thank you, Heather. And Steven, don't forget about thank you Ewan. So much. Ewan and Morgan. I already said Morgan. I said Morgan. Chris, thanks for bringing Mary Beth out. Thank you, Chris. James Dottie. Thank you. Dottie and Billy. James. <laughs> Billy, okay. Bill, I, don't, I didn't get a question for you tonight, Magic. What's up? Did I, I didn't see it. Did I answer it? No. What was it? What was it? What is? Oh, this is this like? Oh, this is like Pictionary. What is? I know, right? I got, I got Magic Man is enjoying the show. I never saw a question. Johnny Wahlberg, my favorite. Is that was it my scary fairy movie? Oh boy. Is it Johnny Wahlberg? Yeah. I don't know. Hey, but if you were if you were a pizza delivery man, how would you benefit using scissors? <laughs> <laughs> I just like to throw curveballs, man. Keep going, keep going. That's just my stuff. Yeah, that's uh, okay. <laughs> Magic man. <laughs> He's got a question. How fast have you driven on the old how fast, How fast have I driven where? On open highway. Oh, I actually. On your bicycle. With the banana seat. In your car. With in the my banana car. seat. Okay, in my car. The fastest I was doing was uh, 130. Wow. 130, and that was in my Lincoln Continental, and Lincoln this was Continental. back in, yeah. I had a Lincoln Continental, I had a like 90, a boat on wheels. 98, right, Ben? Hey, I had a 98 Continental, right? As, uh, actually, as a matter of fact, it was, it's not a funny story, but it's a story. I knew something was coming. I, I was, I was, I was living in West Palm Beach. I was living in West Palm Beach, and I got a, I'm on the phone with my nephew, all right? And I'm going like, hey, yeah, yeah, no, just not. Next thing you know, I can't talk to my nephew. They were in an accident. My my mom, my my sister-in-law, my nephew were in an accident. And I'm going like, uh, you know, I can't hear them. So I just hear the police in the background on the phone. So I get in my car and I haul ass from West Palm Beach to Orlando. I made it there and I shit you not, 50 minutes. 50 minutes from West Palm? from West Palm, Orlando, wow. in my Lincoln Continental V8, and I got pulled over. I got pulled over doing 130. That's why I know, Magic, I was doing 130, because the cop pulls me over, and I told him, I said, I have my stuff ready. I said, listen, my mom was in a horrific accident. Give me a ticket, or let me go. And he goes, ran my, ran my lessons, he came back, and he goes, slow down, or they're going to visit you, and I said, thanks, and I hauled ass again, doing 130, and I made it there in like 50 minutes from West Palm Beach. There we go. You got the answer right there. Lincoln Continental, man. Oh, I'll tell you we what. Had, we had friends and family. I didn't, have I didn't realize I was doing 130. I really didn't. Well, you were on adrenaline. Yeah, I, you know, I wasn't looking. Um, any other things that you want to tell that people don't know about Pat Bianco? Uh, the director of everything with the oh, press. Oh, 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 next weekend. Next weekend is what's Labor Day, yep. so the seventh is a Monday. We're going to be doing a rerun of some sorts. I'm going to get with. Uh, the, uh, we're going to we're going to rerun the first home game. Oh, that's awesome. From the 2019 season, which is a victory. Victory <laughs> against the Columbus Lions, if I'm not mistaken. Like that was a brave heart moment right there. Yes, yes. But then the following week, the following week, we're going to, um, I'm going to actually have right here on Fish on Fire, Mr. Rob Storm, the uh, executive director for the uh, National Arena League. Nice. Owner of the Carolina Cobras slash Jacksonville. Sharks. Sharks. And how we're going to beat him next year? And we're going to go, oh, go trust me. He's no question. No question. Yeah, Very easy. Mary Beth, come here. Ask him all kinds of questions when you come in. When you come in. Chris, you got to bring her. So she can ask. She won't hold back. Yeah, they'd be get her burn. You know. But uh, can you imagine the fireworks coming out of that freaking phone? Oh yeah, they're not my nanny for God's sake. <laughs> you know that's another good word, nanny. 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 What the hell does that mean? Uh, nanny and your baby. 
Hey, Melissa, Pat, thanks for thanks for the opportunity for doing this. Oh man, you're a good cat, dude, and uh, appreciate all you do. Man, I appreciate I, I everybody. Like Fish on fire, you guys are awesome. Cycle Every night, TV, Monday night. Fish on fire. Night. Starlin and Sons, the Tridico family. Coach Bennett is out here today. My man right there has the best one-answer zingers ever. Coach Ben Bennett, dude, look forward to you getting back there, man, getting us back. Hey, Ben. Nah, it's going to be awesome. It's awesome. But, Pat, listen, this, this is a great show. You know, it takes a team effort, but uh, you and Mary came up with a great idea, and uh, people now are kind of hunkered down right now with the stupid COVID thing when it'll go away. But it's a great opportunity to keep the spirit alive for the Predators, man. So, uh, thanks, yeah. seriously, thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Thanks for coming in and uh, interviewing me. If <laughs> Thanks, Mom. We got the fan club. I like it. I got my mom out there. Fish on fire. Fish on fire. Fish on fire. Morgan, Heather, Ewan, Stephen, wherever you are, Stephen, and the mic died on me. There we go. Um, and Joe. Other than that, I want to thank Eric Kohler for coming on the show Thanks, again one more time and uh, hooking up with me here. It was it was fun. It was great. Um, with that, I say, peace out. Go Preds. Predators win!